I thought I'd do a, an update on the uh, Vision Engineering Mantis Elite. As you remember, I've got the uh, Elite Cam, uh, so it's got the USB camera built in. I've probably had it uh, four or five months now. Uh, I just thought it'd be interesting to uh, to update anyone who's interested in this on uh, you know how it's performed and. Uh, and what issues I've had with it. Um, generally it's been absolutely fine. I've had it in the workshop of course over the winter months and um, the biggest problem I've found is because my workshop is you know generally pretty cold when I come out into it um, you know sometimes I'll put the heater on and, and warm it up but the, the biggest problem I found with this is because of the position of your head in front of this as soon as you go to use it in a cold workshop the whole screen will just mist up and uh, I have to keep a little uh, a little cloth next to it in the winter just to keep wiping this uh, this over um, I've tried it with the cover removed um, and with it and it you know it really doesn't make any difference you keep having to uh, you, you keep properly today you have to keep um, wiping the moisture off of it as uh, as things warm up you know, eventually it um, eventually it will stop but it's a bit of a, a bit of a pain um, the other major problem is I mean, it's probably not a major problem but it's a it's an annoyance on something that costs uh, this amount of money um, if you're trying to read some of uh, the chip numbers. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. I mean that's pretty clear, but as you know, a lot of chips, the uh, identification is uh, is not very clear at all. And when you've got a board under this, and you're looking at for the chip identification, um, these LEDs, and as you remember, there, I don't think you're going to be able to see this, but there's a bank here and a bank on the other side and they're very bright which is perfect for most uh, most jobs but what you need is to be able to vary the brightness um, of each bank if you cover up one of the banks slightly and vary the angle of the light coming in or the brightness of the light you can then actually read the identification on uh, on a lot of the chips that are virtually impossible uh, to read. So, you know, ideally, and I know Dave Jones over at the EEV blog has uh, actually stripped his down and he has built uh, a small uh, mod to actually adjust the brightness overall, but I would really like to uh, make something up that you can adjust the brightness for each side and that would make things uh, a whole lot better but you know on a two thousand pound piece of equipment i don't really know why that hadn't been thought of uh, before at least to have it uh, variable on both sides at the same time uh, i know i'd like it on you know, separate levels on either side uh, it's probably being a bit fussy but you know two grand yeah why not why shouldn't we be able to expect a, a variable uh, brightness light source um, so yeah apart from that it's uh, you know, it's done, uh, done very well I, I couldn't be without it now a certain jobs I'm what, 51 now and I just can't see as close up as I could uh, you know when I was 30 it's only come on for me in the last two or three years I've had to move things you know further and further away from my eyes to be able to focus on them which is okay for most day-to-day -day things, but it's not okay for tiny components. I'm lucky in the fact that I'm short-sighted and I can take my glasses off and I can focus you know, much closer up uh, then, but it's just not practical. I then need to put my glasses on to solder. It takes a few seconds for your eyes to get used to the fact you've put your glasses back on or, or you've taken them off. Um, so this really is uh, a lifesaver for me. 
it's made uh, some very tricky work much easier to uh, to deal with and in fact I would go as far as saying some of the, the things I've had in I wouldn't have been able to repair uh, without this because I just can't uh, you know see that fine sort of work anymore and uh, if you remember when I had one of these on test a year or so ago I uh, actually managed to repair a Jaguar ECU module that had had a, a water ingress and was quite badly corroded and again with, without one of these I would have had no chance uh, whatsoever. I'm not saying this is the only thing to, to, to use, you could have a you know a good magnifying glass, there's various headsets with uh, uh, eyepieces that you can use, there's plenty of other cheaper alternatives um, but it's just a very nice professional Thing to have around but it's not cheap even with the forum offer and, a, and the monthly payment scheme that uh, Fission Engineering have offered us on the forum it's, it's still uh, you know not cheap and the only other gripe I guess I've got is the only lens I could afford was the times 4 lens which is perfect for most things but I have found, found myself occasionally wishing for a little bit more uh, magnification on some of the uh, soldering work when I wanted to check it. Um, I have found a sneaky way of increasing the magnification. Uh, it's a bit of a bodge, but you know it has helped. I have, I, you know, I can't even remember what this glass lens is out of. It may have been a projection, uh, a little projector or, or something. But I've had it knocking around for ages, as uh, as I have with uh, this magnifying glass. And what I found that you can do is uh, you can actually slide this under uh, and get quite a good increase in the um, in the magnification, um, probably 20% more magnification from the times four that's in there. Uh, so, you know, if I had access to more lenses, perhaps of a bigger magnification than this one, I could. Uh, you know, improve that, maybe get it up to a six times magnification or or greater. So the lenses are expensive and I'm talking, you know, three, four hundred pounds for some of them. I would probably like a probably a times six or a times eight to go with this. Um, but you know, three, four hundred pounds for me, just working here on my own with uh, with not a lot of work, uh, it's just you know, it's not going to happen. I can't justify that sort of cost. Um, I'm sure for busier servicing departments and, and servicing departments in other industries, this you know, two thousand pounds and two, three, four hundred pounds for each uh, lens is not a big, a big deal. But uh, I think it probably is for most of us in uh, in the TV trade. Um, so yeah, it's it's been great. I couldn't do without it now. I think. Um, it's very comfortable to use. I did have a, an old sort of twin turret stereo microscope, but you're sort of hunched over it. Um, it's awkward when you're wearing glasses as well to use normal microscopes, and and this just takes away, uh, you know, all of the problems like that completely because you can position it in such a way that you're sat bolt upright and just looking straight into it. So it's very comfortable, and especially over long periods of time, uh, which is really important. You know, I used to get headaches and the occasional migraine after doing close-up work, especially if I was taking my glasses off or putting them back on again. That really did uh, throw my vision out. Um, it's not comfortable, and you know, nobody wants headaches. So yeah, it's been great. Um, very pleased overall. I would love it if Vision Engineering came up with their own modification to, uh, to simply adjust the brightness, even if it was just both sides together. Um, I may even drop them a, a line about that. I think I have emailed them in the past about that, uh, that issue. Um, but it would be perfect if each side was adjustable. Um, so yeah, um, just a short update on uh, on that, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you later.